those grills. Little baby grills. Raddy on. You get it? Raddy on. All right, this one's gonna be a little bit fun because I actually have an eGPU already plugged into this MacBook Pro. It's a Vega 64. This is my current one. It's the new one. So I'm gonna see what happens when you turn on the eGPU, the best in the world, with the best graphics card in the world, the Ration 7, on at the same time, let's see. And it's detected a keyboard. Ah, oh, cool, all right. Let's uh, close that down. And let's see what we get up here. Radeon 7 and Vega 64, both at the same time. Radeon 7, Vega 64. <sighs> Getting a bit crazy. The world's most powerful eGPU right here. Radeon, big red font. It's a bit sexy and spooky. The fans, they're not super loud. They're just, they're just going, but that's the Radeon. The eGPU's fans, I can hear a little bit of the PSU, however it's generally quiet, and if you pair it with a two meter cable, should be set for life. Starting with a Blender render, imagine the amount of life you'll be living with, that's right, seven times faster performance, oh my god. So that's 29,545. So right there we're getting 49,263. The Radeon 7 also smashed it in Luxmark with 50% more performances. And going into the real reason why you're considering this card, in maximum ultra settings, you can expect an extra 10 frames per second in gaming. Yeah, boy. Hi ho, hi ho. It's off to the mines we go, well, not for long, as you'll be earning a pay rise of 100% with the R7. Now over to video editing. The R7 was fast in timeline performance. However, exporting was about the same. Thanks to your unoptimized code, Tim Apple. Check this out. My current MacBook Pro 555X can only handle two film grains on at the same time. However, the Vega 20 MacBook Pros, those guys could handle four. My Vega 64 eGPU can handle eight. This is it with eight running. And it runs really well. 2x speed, everything's running fine. If I try hitting it to nine, it sometimes works and sometimes doesn't work. So it's a bit how loaded the system is. But here, it just about played nine. Of course, if I try taking it to 15 or 16, interestingly enough, I just realized that even though I have the HDMI adapter plugged into my eGPU Vega 64, it's actually using the Radeon 7 to run the tests. So that's pretty clever of Mac OS. So Final Cut Pro just uses the most powerful GPU whichever eGPU enclosure you use. And it was, was running pretty fast right there. Anyway, back to my test. I try doing something crazy like 15 film grain effects. Film grainers, boom, shakalaka, frames will drop straight away. It can't handle film grains at that extent. Now, I'm gonna ask you a question. The Vega 64 is a powerful GPU. iMac Pro, expensive upgrade, $800 in Australia. How much faster is the Radeon 7 gonna be over the Vega 64? Make your guesses. The Vega 64 can handle eight to nine film grains. How many film grains can the Radeon 7 handle? Answers in the comments below, because this is gonna blow your minds. All right, I'm here now with the Radeon 7 eGPU. I'm gonna hit it with eight film grains. Handles it like a champ, no problem. Now, let's double it, let's double it, let's go crazy. 16 film grains, can it handle it? Let's go. This is the test. What the actual, what the actual. The Radeon 7 is two times faster than the Vega 64 in Final Cut Pro X when doing advanced rendering effects. Two times faster. And directors, they love their film grains. Seriously, they they buy the most expensive red cameras and they say, you know, the footage is too sharp. Let's add some film grain. These cameras now are so sharp and digital. I just wanted to soften it up because I even threw on film grain in editing in post. That's what they do, Hollywood. All right, in this test, I want to see if it makes rendering out red 8K footage any faster. I think it won't, but let's see. Interestingly enough, the Vega 64 actually rendered out faster than the Radeon 7. Mr. Cook, calling Mr. Cook. 
Let's switch it up to an A7 III. Three, two, one. Here the Vega 64 and Radeon 7 were neck and neck. Now let's see a heavy project with 16 effects applied on top. Let's see how fast it plays this one back. And finally, this is where it counted. Timeline performance. The Vega 64 was getting between 13 and 19 frames a second, whereas the Radeon 7 was hitting 20 to 25 frames a second. The Vega 64 is a really great card. I love it. It's so friggin' quiet. This Asus ROG Gaming Edition hardly ever ramps up the fans, hardly ever makes a noise, and it's really, really fast. The Radeon 7 is a beast of a card. And when I say boost, I mean it's a beast. It can render way more rendering effects than the Vega 64, almost twice as much. But of course, when you pump it through the renderer of Final Cut Pro, it renders slow. So just play back. It's smoother and faster, higher frame rates, all that kind of goodness. But exporting and rendering, it's slightly slower. I don't get it. Please, Apple, optimize your business. Maybe when the Mac Pro and the Vega 2 cards come out, things will be good in the world. Now, I just want to get that out of the way. I'm letting you know straight from the start. Gaming. This guy gets around 10 frames a second more than the Vega 64. 10. 35 frames a second, up to 40 and some angles. So we're getting... 40 to 50 frames a second. Amazing! 10 more frames a second, close to that golden 60. Of course, this is with ultra settings on everything. Everything. So a gaming card, it is faster. However, there is something that sucks. And there's the fan noise. Because this is a legitimate AMD edition of the card, not buried and custom like this beautiful Asus ROG edition of the card, the fans go crazy. They go up to 3,000 revs per minute. And this is how each of the GPUs sound. This is the Vega 64 first. And this is now the Radeon 7. Of course, get a two meter cable, put it far away, put it in a box, put it in a soundproof cage, throw it in a bin, and you love it. Regarding rendering and compute performance, Luxmark, all these kind of heavy rendering applications, this guy is pretty much almost twice as fast. In Luxmark, this guy gets 30,000 and this guy gets 50,000. It is a beast, a boost, a boost mode of the card. But of course, it's very noisy. Ha, huh, the noise levels, the noise. Even when you put your MacBook to sleep, the eGPU just doesn't tell the Radeon card to shut the F up. Yowzers. And it just keeps on going on maximum fan speed. You need to unplug it or turn it off. Unfortunately, it's a bug. I contacted AMD about it. AMD said, we don't care. We don't support eGPUs. I contacted Razer about it. They said, actually, we'll, we'll check it out. So guys, if you want this fixed, contact Razer, contact AMD, and contact whatever card manufacturer, Sapphire, and let them know that their vBioses need improving. And Regarding vBioses, there is a new vBios for the Radeon 7. I installed it, I took a big risk. I didn't know if it would be updatable on an eGPU or if it would break my system, but I got good news, you can install it and it works. All right, this is gonna be fun. There is a BIOS update for the Radeon 7 and just download it. I've been thinking about if I should run it or not, but I'm, I'm just gonna do it. Hopefully it will work. I'm testing this out for you. So you have to run it as administrator. And, and that's it, it's done. That was easy. All right, uh, I'm gonna go into Radeon set settings, system, and hardware. That's still the old version of the BIOS, so I assume I have to restart my computer. Just installed the latest vBIOS for the Radeon 7. A bit scared because I'm doing it via eGPU. The good thing about this BIOS update is apparently it fixes a couple of issues. It allows you to overclock the card faster, allows you to use undervolting better without crashing so much. And for me, what I want to try out, I heard that it allows you to reuse the AV1 encoder of AMD without stuttering. So let's see if it does all these things. So we're now 038 instead of 030. Ooh, okay, that was it. You can install the vBIOS update via an eGPU. I was a bit worried about that, but it worked. It works well. 
Apparently, it makes the AMD renderer perform better, and it did, although you can't use it too much in ultra performance, 4K, all that kind of stuff. It does chug down a little bit, so unfortunately, that's the case. However, you can get OBS and you can use the Microsoft Xbox Game Center to record some nice gaming footage and you can use the AMD renderer, just tone down the footage there. Now, just regarding the macOS experience, because I want to get that out of the way to let you know if this is the card for you, it is generally quiet. It's not as quiet as the Vega 64. However, most of the time, it doesn't ramp up. However, when it does, you just can't control it like you can on Windows. In Windows, you can control the fans. You can do all this kind of sexy, gooey, amazing stuff. But if you're gaming or you're doing anything intensive, I don't tend to game on macOS. But when you game on macOS, Fortnite, you're going to be... Whereas the Vega 64, it doesn't go as loud. You do get 10 more frames a second. So, you know, if you want the best of the best of the best, the Radeon 7 is very sexy. Now, I'm gonna tell you a bit more details that you might not get in other channels, and I'm gonna jump straight into mining. Bitcoin mining, first up. Now, this Radeon 7 actually performs twice as well as the Vega 64 in mining. Just finished benchmarking the Radeon 7 on mining, and you can see that the Daga Hishamoto Claymore Dual Miner gets the most, that's 87 mega hashes a second and it's getting a Bitcoin score of 0 0.00018487 which is almost twice or at least 85% faster than the Vega 64. However, there's some things to know, especially on Windows. In Windows, it's great because you can control the power usage of these cards. So typically, they, this Vega 64 uses 240 watts and this Radeon 7 uses about the same 225, 240, and mining is double. However, you can tone down the speeds. This guy, if you tone him down to 120 watts, and you tone this guy down to 120 watts, this guy still performs about 50% better than the Vega 64, except the fans are quiet, and it's a really good price to performance ratio. So 120 watts, we're getting fan operation of 1,294, and a great score. This is 28,000. Considering this card's maximum is 30,000. That's a really good score on, on Luxmark. And that's half the wattage of usual, as usual. So I'd even consider just going minus 50 on the power limit and just letting the card do its magic. On the Radeon 7, if I had it set to 1400, you can see that over here, the Radeon 7 is only using 176 to 120 watts. It's just bumping up and down on those levels. So it's using even less wattage than the Vega 64. So at around 100 watts of power, you're getting a score of 42,684. And the fans were going pretty much the lowest they can go, which is 900 revs per minute. So it's a very, very silent card at that performance. However, in things like 3D Mark, if you leave it on balance mode, you're getting over 7,000. And that gave us a score of 7,422. However, it did sound like a jet engine. Whereas if you start toning down the power and the energy, yeah, the score does go down. It becomes more bearable to use though. Like the fans will ramp up to 3,000 and you can actually use the card and enjoy your life but you don't get that sexy score. So maybe when your mates are around, show them that sexy score. And then when your mates F off, tone it down, enjoy your life. But there is one thing to know about these cards, a bit more in depth that you don't get in other places. I don't know how accurate this is. The sensors, what they're telling me is, when this guy idles, he only uses six to nine watts of power. This guy can fit into a friggin' laptop and it will run fine, six to nine watts of power. Whereas this guy, it uses 22 watts of power. And the Vega 64, when it's idle, is only using 9 watts of power, 6 to 9 watts of power. That is crazy low. That's as, as low as my 555X uses in my MacBook Pro. The minimum speed that this guy goes is 808 megahertz, whereas the minimum speed this guy goes is 60, 60 megahertz. <laughs> so this is a more power efficient card, and I wish, I wish maybe when the Navi 5950, 
XT comes out, that will be the sexiest card in the world because you can have custom biases and custom builds. So do I recommend this card? Well, if you're doing crazy rendering effects or Bitcoin mining, then hell yeah, it's a very, very sexy card. Fan noise aside, you can just chuck it far away. But for the best deal in the business, the Vega 64, especially the custom build, this one in particular, it's a very sexy card. And in case you're wondering, in the latest version of Windows, you can actually plug in multiple eGPUs. Look, I've got a Radeon 7 and a Vega 64 <laughs> plugged in at the same time. Radeon 7's pumping out 200 watts. And the Vega 64, that guy's pumping out 240 watts of power. And we get a massive score of 82,000. Hope you enjoyed the review. Hope you found it fruitful and helpful to your purchase decisions. Radion, get it, Radion. Just some tips for eGPU people. If you go into system preferences and then displays, what you wanna do is drag that system bar from your MacBook's display over to the external monitor and that will give applications a hint that you want this guy to be your primary monitor and what that means is it means it will prioritize rendering off of an eGPU.